Hey guys, we're gonna be trying some new makeup today. What's new? I feel like there's been so many new makeup releases, I, I can barely keep up. So I'm just doing these videos where I'm just trying on a whole bunch of stuff. So we're gonna be starting off with the NARS Soft Matte Primer, the new Soft Matte Complete Foundation. They sent over three shades, uh, so we'll figure out which one works best for me. They also sent over three shades of the Soft Matte Concealer. We'll give this a shot. I've definitely used this before I have like mixed feelings about this concealer, which I'll get into. I've got the Danessa Myricks Balm Contour in Light 2. I also have the Trini London Lash to Brow Mascara and Brow Gel. So that is very, very interesting to me. Um, I also have the Dior Show 24 Hour Stilo, uh, the two eyeliners that came out for holiday. So I have Sparkling Brown and Sparkling Taupe. Um, I do also have this Kogan Doe mascara. This is the Long Lush Treatment Mascara. I've used this before, but they just sent me shade Cocoa Brown. And we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what happens there because this is very curious to me. Um, and then I do have some new eye products. I have those Guerlain Cream Shadow Sticks, which I was not able to kind of squeeze into my last trying new makeup video. And then I do have the um, Tom Ford Eye Color Quad in Naked Pink, which is the new quad for the Soleil Neige collection. And some Dior lipsticks to play around with. I don't think I'm gonna be swatching all of them. It's a lot of lip swatches. Um, but I'm gonna be picking out maybe a couple to swatch just to kind of play around with and see. So why don't we go ahead and start with this NARS Soft Matte Primer. And uh, for the instructions it says, after skincare, which I have done, before makeup, apply a small amount to the face or desired areas using fingertips. So I'll do that. And I'm just very curious about this whole soft matte feeling that NARS is giving us. As you guys know, I prefer a skin-like, slightly radiant finish to my complexion products, especially. And I feel like companies are using the term soft matte for a skin-like kind of finish, but who knows? We'll definitely have to see. So let me go ahead and squeeze some of this out. So this is what the primer looks like. So this primer is supposed to smooth the appearance of my skin and also help prolong the wear of my makeup. So that all sounds really good to me. It is on the thicker side for sure. There is a scent to it. It just, I don't know. I can't even describe it. It just kind of, it smells like makeup. Not bad though. It feels very, very smooth on my skin for sure. It feels a little silicone-y. I don't know the ingredients because they sent it to me just like this. It didn't come in the box. So I'm not sure what the ingredients are, but it definitely does feel like, like a, a, a slick kind of silicone type of primer. All right, and next for the Soft Matte Complete Foundation. So they sent over Vienna, which is light 4.5. Then they sent over Punjab, which is medium one. And then Patagonia, which is medium 1.2. Um, I think I'll start with Vienna, the light 4.5. I'm gonna shake this up. And this soft matte foundation is described to have a natural looking dimensional soft matte finish. Ooh, okay, some of it just kind of came out of the top there. Well, I'm just gonna put a little bit down here. Yeah, I think this shade actually works for me. I think these two may actually end up being too deep. So, glad I started with this. Um, let me just <laughs> spread out what is on my finger. And I'm gonna use my new Refer um, number 31 brush. This is their angled foundation brush. And just gonna blend this in. Wow, I use the teensiest bit and I see some coverage there, okay. And as I suspected, this soft matte, it's definitely matte, but it's not dry looking. So it's very, it's very soft. It's very skin-like. All right, and I think this shade definitely works for me, this uh, Vienna Light 4.5. So I'm going to just tap a little bit more onto my forehead here and Add just a little bit more coverage where I need it, around my nose, around my eyes. Yeah, I used just the slightest amount. I didn't even squeeze out any more, just kind of what overflowed. I just tapped with my finger. That's all I used on this half of my face. And I feel like I have a light medium coverage there. So if you're someone like me that prefers lighter coverage, you really don't need a lot of this product. 
All right, so there it is applied to this half of my face. Nothing but the primer on this half. Nice. I really like this soft matte thing we're seeing a lot of because I've never minded a matte finish. It's just that it's always made my skin look really dry and sometimes it would feel really dry. But this kind of like new generation of matte where it's just a little bit more of a natural matte finish versus just like a really dried out finish, I think actually looks really nice. And it feels great on the skin and it doesn't make my very dry skin feel or look any drier. Okay, let me go ahead and just use up what's left on the side of this tube here and apply it to the rest of my face. All right, so there is the foundation applied to uh, my entire face. Yeah, I, I like this finish. I like this finish. It's definitely on the matter side for me, for sure, but I don't feel like it makes my skin look dry or aged in any way, which is a big plus. All right, let's move on to the soft matte concealer. So I will say I have used this soft matte concealer before, and when I have first opened up the little jar. I like using it under my eyes. I like using it on my face. I think it's a great concealer, but the older the product got like pretty quickly, I felt like it would start to look really dry underneath my eyes. So I don't really like using this soft matte concealer underneath my eyes. Again, I have really dry skin. I'm 48 years old. There's a lot of fine lines going on. Um, so I'm just going to use this uh, to kind of like spot conceal some of my um, age spots here on my face, but I'm gonna avoid my under eyes. So they sent me, let's see, uh, light 2.5 creme brulee, light 2.75 cannelle, and medium one custard. I know custard is too deep for me. Um, I think creme brulee actually is the shade that I have, hold on. So creme brulee is actually what I have in my stash. So this is the shade that works for me. I am not gonna open any of these so I can uh, donate these, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to, again, use this just on my face. So I'm just going to put my ring finger in here, pick up a little bit. This is very high coverage concealer and just press it onto these darker spots on my face. Does a really good job like diminishing those, doesn't it? Sunspots just keep on coming out. Really wish I wore that SPF when I was younger. <laughs> so I think using your finger is also key for this concealer because the warmth of your finger will really kind of help it melt into the skin but it does such a good job camouflaging my age spots. Next, I wanna use the Danessa Myricks Balm Contour in light number two. So I was really curious about this because I have her uh, cream bronzer, um, but I wanted to try this contour. So I was curious about the shade of this. Okay, here it is. And it is quite warm. I felt the same way about her cream bronzer. It's definitely on the warmer side. So let's see if this works for my skin tone. I'm going to pick some up with my Sonia G uh, mini base brush and just press it underneath my cheekbones. Definitely works really well as a shadow, but it's so interesting because I do find it to be warm, but I feel like it works. Maybe there's a little bit of red in here, which I think always helps. All right, well, that's the Balm Contour in Light 2 from Danessa Myricks. You guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Sometimes it's hard to see when I'm just like sitting here under the lights that are so bright. I'm like, what is the tone? <laughs> All right, and for blush, I don't have a brand new blush, but I have a blush that I hauled months ago. I'm pretty sure I hauled this before I moved and I just never got a chance to use them. Never got a chance to use them for you guys. These are the Melt Cream Blush Lights and I have two shades. I have Polished and I have Golden Hour. So here is Golden Hour and here is Polished. And I can see where I swatched them for you guys, <laughs> but I never used them. 
I think I'm gonna use polished. I think golden hour is definitely more of like a springy color for me. It's a very light peach. This one at least is a little deeper of a coral. And I think I'm gonna use the same brush, the same mini base brush and just dip in. And there's a little bit of a metallic reflect in here. It's like a light golden reflect. Oh, these have like a, like a vanilla scent? Hmm, interesting. Oof. Wow, that's pretty, okay. Well, super, super pretty. I do love Melt Cheek products, like that Honeycomb blush duo that they had, the highlighters, and their highlighters are, oh, they're incredible. Wow, this does not disappoint. Look pretty that is. I wonder if they have more pinky shades. All right, those are the Melt Cream Blush Lights. Totally not brand new, as you guys know, uh, but just something I haven't been able to use for you guys. Okay, and for highlight, again, a, not a new product at all, new to me. This is the Laura Geller Baked Original Highlighter Duo. I don't think this is new. I feel like I've seen people talk about it. So this is the duo with French Vanilla and then French Kiss on the other side. So there's like a, let me put this up. That would help. <laughs> so there's the French Vanilla and then like a little bit of a pinky side. And it says in the box here, all glow, no glitter, which is music to my ears because I don't really like micro glitter on my cheeks. So I'm gonna take my uh, Sonia G Detail Pro brush and I'm just gonna go between the two shades and ooh, a lot of kick up. I'm gonna tap off the excess and apply to the tops of my cheekbones. Oh, pretty, it's cooler than I thought, or maybe I just picked up a little bit more of the pink. Ooh, but that's such a pretty soft satin highlight. Definitely, um, you know, visible, but not like one of those really super crazy highlights. Actually, I feel like this shade maybe is a little bit too light for me. Do you see how it looks a little dusty over here? Hang on, hang on. Maybe I'll just go into this uh, French vanilla side. Yeah, the tone of this highlight is a lot cooler than I thought just by looking at this pan, especially just using this French vanilla side. I thought it'd be a champagne, but it's a little bit more silvery and yeah, I think not using the pink side, I think has helped. Like this side, I don't know if you guys can see it. It just looks a little dusty, a little ashy on my skin. It's a little bit too cool toned. This looks a lot better. It's a little bit more, I guess, closer to my skin tone. I really like this satin finish though. It's very pretty, very becoming. Next up, let's try this uh, brush tinted gel. Uh, from Trini London. So it's the Lash to Brow Mascara and Brow Gel. That's what the packaging looks like, dual ended product. So this side with the pattern is the brow, and then this side is the lash, the one with her logo on it. All right, so let's start with the brow. And they sent over shade Black Espresso. So the brow product is espresso, and the mascara is black. So here is the brow wand, nice and petite. I feel like I see fibers in here. Is that possible? Let me just use it, see what happens. That's really nice. I feel like I got a pretty bold brow there very easily and very quickly. That was just a few swipes. Oh, wow. If I may compare it to the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel, I feel like the actual gel is a teensy bit looser than the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel, which is more of like a pomade. It's a little bit thicker, but it is brand new. I just opened it, so I wonder if it's going to kind of thicken up a little bit. Okay, so each duo has the black mascara at one end, and the other end there's five options for shades, and this is $37. Okay, it doesn't make any mention of fibers in there, and I don't really see them in the brow. I could have sworn I saw it in the wand here. Yeah, there is definitely fibers in here. You guys, I'm so excited. Okay, let me do my other brow. I mean, really fast work for some pretty bold brows. Oh, nice, okay. So far, so good. Um, before I use the mascara side, I'm going to put on some eyeshadow and eyeliner. 
So we're gonna play with the Tom Ford quad and then I also have these Guerlain cream shadow sticks. Okay, let's let's take a look at everything that we have. All right, so one cream shadow stick has this deeper brown and then this uh, warm, kind of almost peachy gold. And then the other duo has like a gunmetal and then a silver. So I'm just talking about these, sorry, these Mad Eyes um, Guerlain duo shadow sticks. These came out for holiday and I talked about them a little bit in my last trying new makeup video, but I just, I couldn't fit it all in because I was using those Dior Quince. Um, but I'm hoping to maybe use these along with this Tom Ford Soleil Neige Naked Pink. I think, well, by looking at this quad, it doesn't look like there's anything terribly deep in tone here. So maybe I'll have the opportunity to use like this deep brown from the girl on. So let's just play. Let's start with the Tom Ford quad. Well, here's a close look at it. Ooh, these Guerlain shadow sticks seem like pretty long wear. I'm using a makeup remover right now and it's, it's taking a little bit, a little bit of muscle to get it off. So here are the four shades from Tom Ford. I started at the top left and went uh, clockwise, so I ended with the topper shade. This matte shade over here is like literally the exact shade of my hand. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on my skin at all. And now I'm really curious. So I'm gonna start with that shade. All right, so I've got a Sony G Worker One brush. I'm gonna go into this matte shade. This one has like a metallic shift to it. And then this one is that topper shade. Oh yeah, I mean, there's like a little, you can see like a little bit of the shadow, <laughs> but it's, it's like my skin tone. Okay, let's move on from that shade then. Um, I'm really loving this shade, at least from the looks of the swatch. Does that look pretty? So I'm gonna just use the same brush, go into this shade, which is like a very light copper with a really pretty sheen to it. Wait, is this called, is this called Naked Pink? I feel like this should be called Naked Peach. All right, there is that shade all over. Um, I'm gonna just take my finger and grab this topper shade and just add it to my lid here. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty. I have a little bit of fallout from that. And then I'm gonna take my um, BK Beauty Angie brush, um, A504, this is the really small blender brush, and I'm gonna go into this shade up here because the swatch looks a lot lighter than it looks in the pan. The pan makes it look like it's kind of this tan shade, and here it looks like a champagne gold. So I'm gonna go for it and just add it to my inner corners here. Okay, well that is the Naked Pink palette. It's nice, but I don't know, I don't feel like it makes a very big like impact in any way. I mean, maybe if I use this shade all over my lid because it does have a nice soft gold reflect, but this is a little bit soft, even for me. And you guys know I like boring, <laughs> basic eyeshadow looks. All right, I'm gonna try and deepen things up with this Contrast Shadow Duo Cream Stick from Guerlain. Uh, I have the one, let's see. So there's shiny gold at one end and then deep plum at the other. Oh wow, I didn't really detect much of a purple in there when I swatched it, but let's see. All right, so I'm going to, I'm gonna do one eye at a time because like I mentioned when I was trying to remove them with the makeup remover, it took a little bit of muscle. So these definitely set down. So I'm just gonna add to my lash line. I think normally I probably would have laid this down first before the powder shadow, but I really wanted to get a sense of that Tom Ford quad, like the feeling of it. And these seem to be working fine over the powder shadow. It's actually mixing in with that topper shade really beautifully. It's making this look like it has some micro glitter in there, which it doesn't. It has like a metallic sheen, but it doesn't have little micro glitters. All right, so there is the deep plum kind of used as liner, I guess, and I just winged it out a teensy bit at the end and just smudged it out with my finger. All right, so I just used that to smoke out my eyes just a little bit. 
it really does look more like liner, but I have those Dior liners that I want to use. So let me put this away. And again, I'll try and use these a little bit more, maybe the silver one in an upcoming video. It's just so many new releases. <laughs> um, but let's jump over to these Dior Show eyeliners. So again, they sent over sparkling brown and sparkling taupe. I love these eyeliners, especially the um, shades that they come in. I just find them to be just really pretty and really unique. And these actually appeared in my top three um, products in every category video because I just, yeah, I just love them so much. So here is sparkling brown and here is sparkling taupe. So they both have a little bit of shimmer to them and sparkling taupe even has like a little bit of an iridescent shift to it. So pretty. So I think I'm going to use sparkling brown as much as I love sparkling taupe. I think because I have this deep guerlain on top, if I use a sparkling taupe, it would probably just disappear. So I'm going to use this to tight line my lower lash line, my waterline. And I'll add it to my upper waterline a little bit here. Okay, there is the Dior liner on. I'm sure, I'm sure you can't see um, the shade too clearly since it's just eyeliner, but I see just a hint of the sparkliness in my waterline there. All right, let me go ahead and curl my lashes and then I'll come back and use that Trini London mascara. All right, so I'm gonna use this side now. And again, this is a black shade. Here's the mascara. All right, that's two coats of the mascara. It's nice, it makes my lashes look fluttery. Like, fluttery. <laughs> okay, let's move on to these Dior lipsticks. So there was definitely one that I needed to try, and it was one of these Diorific. Number 75, Rouge Capucine or Capucine. It is this burnt orange shade. So I definitely wanna try that one. And then I did wanna try one of these um, Rouge Dior Floral Lip Care Long Wear. I think I wanna try this pink rose shade because it's very uh, peachy actually <laughs> versus pink. And it has this really beautiful, beautiful, subtle sheen. Isn't that pretty? It just seems to glow. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch this one first. This has that Dior lipstick scent. It smells like a floral perfume, and I can taste it a little bit. Okay, but aside from that, here is Pink Rose. What a bright, fresh color. Very, very creamy. Really comfortable formula. I just wish it didn't have the scent. Like, I feel like the scent has faded, but I can still taste it. All right, so that is the Pink Rose. Let me remove this, and we'll try on the other shade. All right, and now for the Diorific Rouge Capuchine shade. And this also has beautiful engraving in the bullet of the Dior Boutique. And this shade also has a little bit of a metallic sheen to it, but it's this beautiful burnt red rusty shade. Whoa, the pigmentation is nuts. Wow, what a beautiful shade. You guys, they are really killing it this year with the like rusty red shades, these orange tones. Man, I love it. And it really brings out the copper in that naked pink eyeshadow quad. Oof, all right, well. Another fun, very fun, trying new makeup video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.